big vertical air drops right into a oh, heavy finishing wow. move. Medina hangs on. <laughs> this contest is really special and it's hard to win. So I'm really happy today. are pumping and it's like magic baby. Epic three days of competition here at the Corona Open J Bay. Here they are, the top five. And uh, let's kick it off South Africa. Uh, they had four surfers to cheer on in the men's event and they put up some big numbers. And Maddie McGilbray, one of the highest scoring surfers of the contest, Laura. Maddie McGilbray was one of my picks to win this. And you know, that heat that he had against Ethan Ewing yesterday was just, you know, they were going back to back. It was perfect, Jay Bay. The surfing he was doing this event right out of the gates when he won his first round was just impeccable. And yeah. same with the wild cards. Luke yeah. Thompson here. He was amazing, wasn't he? Just, just incredible. He, he's 18 years old surfing as, you know, like he's been on tour for a long time. And Josea. Gotta love it, right? Uh, very much the crowd favorite. I think of all these four South Africans, Jose had the, the most uh, you know, influence in the crowd. They loved him. Uh, but Jordy, I think he's the king. Uh, he's always been one of the most uh, crowd favorites here at J-Bay specifically. And uh, I think it, today he would have liked his chances. Uh, you know, but unfortunately that uh, quarterfinal didn't really work out for him. Yeah, you've got to surf it in all conditions to get that victory. And probably the trickiest heat of the day was quarterfinal number four. But uh, Jordy Smith, He'll always collect big results here at Jeffreys Bay. Number four, surfers getting the job done here at Jeffreys Bay. Joanne DeFay clinching her position, getting a world title shot once again. That's so cool, you know, and she again just uh, very surprised at you know, the situation. And then also Jack Robinson with his performance. I think he was pretty much a lock considering what we have on tap for our last event of the season, but ultimately he came away as a finalist here and you gotta love that, clinch the spot into the final five. All those surfers at the top end of the ladder really just want to hang on to these seeds and surf less heats when they get to the Rip Curl WSL finals. Coming in at number three, Yago Dora, just so strong on the backhand, particularly yesterday in those big conditions. Gave us some real highlight moments and one of the highest scoring surfers of the yeah, event. Yago has cemented himself in as one of the best backside surfers on tour. Up there with the Italos, the Gabriels here at J-Bay, getting 9.5, the highest score of the event, and going to the air as well in offshore winds. So hard to do, but just, you know, the whole crowd was just losing it watching Yago. He was just going inverted at J-Bay. Those knees, so bendy. <laughs> Yeah, that was the that way that he needed right there at the end there. We're trying to, to get the 8.8. .8. It just came up just a bit shy. Coming in at number two and breaking through for a second victory of the season. Just powering up the, the ratings into that final five pitcher is Tatiana Weston Webb. Her backhand so strong, the, the first goofy footer to win on the women's side here at Jeffreys Bay. Really, really cool, and I think the biggest part of what she was able to achieve was uh, the fearless factor on these inside sections. She was not shy about going into it. Very tough to do and very brave. She did a good job there. Really impressive. But at number one, it's Ethan Ewing getting into his first championship to a final. Just silky smooth on his road through to this effort and really put the, the foot on the gas up against Jack Robinson in the final to get his first win, Pete. Floodgates are open. I feel like this is, uh, again, the little monkey off the back of, uh, you know, wanting to win because he's seen Griffin Colapinto this season, you know, fellow teammate. Also, Jack Robinson, another youngster, just a little bit younger than him, uh, to be able to get there and finally do it. I really feel like this is a winning formula for him. The, the emotion, Laura, we, we've never seen it from Ethan Ewing like that before. No, we haven't. You know, he's usually the quietest in his interviews, the most reserved. He's such a nice guy. I can remember my first time coming to J-Bay absolutely vividly like it happened yesterday. We were driving to Cape Town on the way to the SA Champs, my first SA Champs in 1968. And my dad had a Jeep Wagoneer, this green Wagoneer. We had all these boards on top and we drove all the way down here, and we got here in the evening. We stayed at the Beach Hotel. We woke up early that morning, the next morning, and we drove down to the point. There was like a little campground on the point. And we drove down to the point. There was no one there, no one in the campground, just us. We drove through, and we stopped. We 
ran through the campground and we jumped out and we looked at the surf and it was perfection. Four to six feet, flawless, the best waves that any of us had ever seen. And we looked at this and went, wow, this is unbelievable. We got our boards, we ran across the rocks and we went out there and we surfed for three hours, just the two of us as the sun rose up, boiled up through the Indian Ocean. And even though the wave here is about maybe 1.5 k's when it's really good from Bonyons all the way to Point. So it's like a narrow area, small area. The impact of this area is felt in every home in this town. Whether you surf or whether you don't surf, the impact is profound. And back in the day when we used to come here, surfers weren't accorded that much respect you know, drugs, long hair, layabouts, didn't, don't, don't want to work, just want to go surf. And yeah, we just wanted to go surfing. But surf has built this place. And many people in this town realize it. Some people don't. They think what they do is not connected with surf. Every single person in this town, no matter what they do, are ultimately drawing their income from surf and it shows this amazing power of surf. We've got Ethan Ewing now, using his priority on this one. Good looking wall standing up. Smooth first carve, up into the pocket again. And just slicing through the face of this wave, staying nice and close to the bowl. Just a, a linking turn there. Just trying to put it all together. And paint a, a nice picture for the panel as he drives up into this steeper section of the wave now again just arcing off the top wants to really get some of these more high impact turns done down the line and there is a sensational layback jam as he kicks out he has eaten he has ethan ewing's turn folks big wave for ethan he's gonna pace it he's gonna attack it this is a big wave, it's got magnitude on it and he's gonna attack it again. Free falls this time. Looking for the requirement and more now. Ethan Ewing down the track. Will wanna drive the score home. Huge wrapping turn, he loves it. Yeah, um, I've been so inspired by Jack this year. He's, he's had a really incredible year getting wins and uh, I hadn't had a win yet and I was just um, coming here, I just didn't put any pressure on myself and yeah, Jack uh, started off so well with the aid and I kind of just tried to keep my composure and yeah, it feels incredible. <laughs> yeah, um, going to Chopes next. I haven't spent too much time there, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. For the men, Ethan Ewing! Executed. Yeah, it almost looked like he was in two minds about this ride, but he's fully committed now. Straight into one of those big drawn out calves, up into the pocket, drifts those fins. And that's an aggressive approach. He's on his way to a good opener already, bouncing back over the foam, staying close to the bowl here. Robinson showing great variation as he gets on the attack here in the final of the Corona Open J Bay. The West Aussie surfer on an incredible run this year, chasing his third victory in 2022. And he has kicked off with a bang. As
looking for my wins. I need my hands. This life is real. Don't they pretend? Came off the fence. I get it in. 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 Probably going to come out swinging. Uh, Anderson's probably going to come out swinging. He's got a lot of fruit. Sexton's fast. That's that's the top too. I mean, look, we've been watching that for two years. Sexton's yeah. an unbelievable rider, so I think he'll be a factor if he gets a good start. So you and Shimoda holding it down for the West Coast, huh? Yeah, me and Shimoda, so I'm pretty pumped on it and yeah, ready to get it going. What about the other guys? Are the other guys healthy? Or? Yeah, just this is kind of what we decided to do, and I was ready. So Joe was ready, so I decided to get it going. How's your boy doing, Mitch Payton? He's good. Is he good? Yeah. He looks a little nervous. Some of them today. Is he Tickets are electronic. <laughs> I used to have them in my pocket all the time for you. I had a, a rat hole of 10 all the time. And you would never need them, but then every race you would need them. So how do I get tickets? They're NFTs now? They're digital assets? Uh, digital assets. It's like having a Bitcoin. You don't even, can't even uh, hold a Bitcoin. So like, <laughs> oh, so tickets are like Bitcoin now. It's all crypto. Yeah, it's crypto. We're all good. We're here, bud. This is it. A1, it's been two years. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm stoked. Um, I had a really good off season. Um, my December was a little rough, but I'm excited to just keep it going and, and kick it off again here. Uh, I really kind of revamped myself to, you know, enjoy riding and racing again, just like how I did it last year. But I, I'm just excited to be here with my family again and, and go another round. Um, even though we always have a short off season, but every time the racing comes around and we're here, it's, uh, there's something inside, I think all of us that do this job that um, get something exciting, get butterflies in the stomach, and uh, we're ready to do it again. Moved to the East Coast, now you're racing West Coast. Back and forth, dude. What are you thinking? It's not bad, we kept the house out here, got my buddy uh, staying in it, rolled right in, right back into the crib, like everything was normal. So, for me it was pretty easy, fairly turnkey I guess, but Miss Florida, but you know, California will do for the next six weeks. Oh, so you miss Florida? I like it there. Dude. Okay, so you, yeah. you like it better over there? I do, I like it. Your teammates are some tough competition. They're some fast dudes. Yeah, they are for sure. You I think that's a benefit for you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm practicing every week. So I know where I'm at. And uh, yeah, but I'm not afraid to run in there if it takes it. So yeah, I'm ready. Yo, hell. E biker, gamer, hill climber, shit docker, <laughs> hill climber. Super cross rider, yeah. burrito connoisseur. I found a good the chicken spot. You last night. Tacos? I heard you over here for the free tacos. Yeah, like Wahoo's coming through. <laughs> <laughs> I told him that had to be in the deal. Uh, okay. So what they like? I thought Little Hill, not Big Hill. You're you're at Supercross. Yeah, yeah. Justin got hurt. Like we were about to race each other for like three days, and then uh, Justin had a little little bike issue on a jump face and hurt his shoulder. So hopefully he'll be back. I in thought he was a cop. He was. So is he still a cop? He kind of rides like one. Uh, like my cop's on dirty, or is he dirty cop? Or is nah, he? Uh, he's not a cop anymore. He. Uh, what happened? He tried it and decided he didn't think it was gonna make him happy like dirt bikes. So, yeah. So what's up, Saxton? We're at A1. You look sort of not nervous. Yeah, no, I feel good. Um, compared to last year, I was just, I feel a lot more calm, a lot more, uh, I guess I should say confident. Um, had a good off season and uh, yeah, just riding through practice and then uh, it's on to the night show. You so. won second practice, huh? Yeah, one practice so far. So yeah. it's, uh, it means absolutely nothing. You've won practice before. I won practice before. It's about winning the race now. So, how's G's hands? Are they still as firm as they used to be? Yeah, very firm. He lost a little weight. He's still got the G. Yeah, he's, he's still got he's still got some uh, strength in there. Uh, work that G. Sure. <laughs> sure. The pit party looks sort of massive, huh? I know. I do. I feel like such a dickhead because like they're like COVID and everything like yeah. that. I'm like, hey guys, how's it going? But like things are being a fan, but could you? Off a little bit. Yeah, yeah, can't yeah. yeah. Close, so you, you can't I, be, oh, I feel so you bad. You can't be spreading the love, dude. No. You don't want anybody spreading the love to you. No, exactly, exactly. So, anything else? Dude, we're in Anaheim. Dude, we're coming off that video. Yep. Aliens, weird yep. shit. Yep. I thought that was pretty dope. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. doing that it with was you. Sick. It was good. I think it that video good. is going to age like a 
fine line. Yeah, yeah. And Ombre is gonna keep going, you know that, right? Yeah, we need to get some of the weird cartoons and shit, keep them, keep them pumping, and uh, hopefully we can be able to do another video here soon, maybe yeah. this summer or something, you know, get something okay. different. Hey, buddy, you think you're just gonna be stuck around the pit? Not sure that side hit? What? Let me see that side hit. Like that shit? Yeah, what's up with that? Uh, <clears throat> basically my bar, so my mechanic Justin, his yeah. barber, Jose, he comes out to the track sometimes to watch. And he was kind of putting some pressure. I did this a few months ago. And they're kind of putting some pressure on me to do it again. I'm like, dude, I'm going to come out here. I'm going to have to get like 12 or something today because my shoulders hurt. I'm like, I don't know if I feel comfortable getting 12 with a lightning bolt in my hair. And they said, just run it. I said, okay. Did Jose so, hook it up or did you have to Oh, no. Jose hooked it up. He's a dog. Oh, I think we're ready to rock. I mean, uh, we did everything we can, you know. It's, uh, it's nice to get it. Next couple hours, we'll uh, see if it all paid off. But I think I think I think we're looking good. Are you drinking during or after the race? I'm gonna start drinking pretty heavy pretty soon. <laughs> In the blue, man. <laughs> you ready? I'm just excited, man. A lot of height. Yeah, I'm cranked though. Good height. You feeling this track? <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a tough A1. Like two sets of hoops technical rhythm to like do every time so it's solid y'all good Woo. whoops are gnarly <laughs> you've been filming the whoops yeah I'm Woo. Filming the whoops. how you feeling man yeah not too bad not too bad <laughs> tough class tough class this year but run one it's gonna be a good one but old mad still going huh that's still going yeah we, we, we've lost the 20s and in 30s now so yeah, we're still going great. See the grays are coming in, but gray bush. Woo! Heavy. <laughs> A1, that's a big deal. Yeah, but I mean, I was riding so good, so I feel like I, I got f***ed on the start, man. I really thought that it was going to be a restart. Like, it, it bounced, and I'm not trying to come up with excuses on why I didn't get a good start, but it didn't make it easy on me. So. It's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. We'll be back next weekend. We got uh, we got an IOU for 28 from the heat race. So I'm looking forward to Oakland. Yep. Hold it, bud. Second place. Second place, barely. It, it was getting squirrely at the end. Woo. That was gnarly, but <laughs> pumped, to, pumped to pull that one off and get it done. So start off uh, A1 with second place. Pretty pumped. Fair. Double down, dude. Let's go. A1. Yeah, sir. We uh, we opened it up with a win last year. And, and I know what it's going to take to uh, hold this red plate. So. Man, to do it here with all the fans back, it's a dream come true for me. I grew up here, coming to these races every year, and uh, to be up on this top stage winning. Uh, last time we were here, actually, A2, I was on the ground, me and Fernandez. So uh, to back that up, uh, it feels good, man, I'm stoked.
<laughs> it's all right. I'll, I'll take that for the first race. Good to know where we're at. Yeah. Just keep, uh, what about keep playing along. What and about I'll, Anderson? I don't know. All right. Good job, crew. Great, great comeback. Uh, he was a sleeper. I don't know. Honestly, I just make passes and I go. I don't really think about. I know I didn't hit anybody too hard, so. Rebels racing. You happy? Yeah, I'm happy for sure. Yeah. I might right. not look happy. I'm just. Look at me, Frog. Look at me, dude. It's a shark, dude. Look at me. Are we good? The shark, baby. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good race. I had fun. Yeah. What's up? A1. We're done. Best I've ever done at A1, man. So uh, I can't complain. Starting the season strong. Right where we want to be. And uh, we'll go to work this week. Get a little better with myself and the bike. And come back swinging next week. Open. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know why. I'm just thankful. Dude. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to make it through this freaking track. It was brutal today. It really was. It was probably one of the gnarliest Anaheims we've had. Probably just due to the rain. It was really soft and pressed today. Softer than I've ever seen it. So obviously the track uh, deteriorated. And uh, obviously the, the guys that built the track, they definitely did not go easy on us for it being the first round. <laughs> There have been so many major milestones in women's surfing in recent years, but in my opinion, this one might be the biggest. The first year the women's tour will officially compete at Pipeline. The most dangerous wave in the world welcomes its new challengers. While we recognize those who paved the way, all the way back to Joyce Hoffman, to the 70s chargers like Lynn Boyer and Margot Ober, to the turn of the century legends like Rochelle Ballard and Kiala Kennelly. And more recently, Moana Jones Wong. Women are earning their rightful place on surfing's biggest stage. There's a limitless future on the horizon, one we're all looking forward to seeing. July 19, 1848, a women's rights convention in Seneca Falls, New York, launches the movement to give American women the right to vote. That campaign succeeds when the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution takes effect more than 70 years later. 1993, President Bill Clinton announces the don't ask, don't tell policy on gays serving in the military. It certainly will not please everyone, 
perhaps not anyone, and clearly not those who hold the most adamant opinions on either side of this issue. The compromise forbids the military from asking service members about their sexual orientation, and it requires a discharge for service members who are openly gay or engage in homosexual activity. 1969. Apollo 11 and its three astronaut crew start orbiting the moon ahead of man's first landing on the lunar surface. 1990, baseball's all-time hits leader Pete Rose gets five months in federal prison and a $50,000 fine for filing false tax returns. That happens after Rose is banned for life from baseball amid claims he bet on the game, something he admits years later. And 1980. Summer Olympics start in Moscow, minus the United States and dozens of other countries. Those countries decide to boycott the games over the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan. Today in History, July 19th, Carlotta Bradley, The Associated Press. Welcome back in our studio and in today's news, 